to be free from the burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Good to your evil, a victory win. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working out in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, 
Kiddos, kiddos, kiddos. Come on down. You're the next contestants. I'm going to put this up here and hopefully to. Hey, we're not going to sing today. You got to listen to me. Oh, I forgot my special gift. All discombobulated here. All right. Got a whole crew of kiddos. Okay, y'all are going to have to back up just a hair. Okay. You want to sit up here, Arch? All right. I'm glad you guys are here this morning. Did you guys find the candy bowl out there? Okay, I see a couple of you did. There's dum-dums and smarties out there. So make sure you fill your pockets when you go home. There you go. Yeah, there you go. All right. Hey, what are these? You guys know what these are? Do you know anything special about pretzels? Can I? Oh, shaped in a heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're tasty. That is that is definitely. And you know what? I'm going to share those with you in just a minute. Let me read. Can I read you a little bit of history about the pretzel? Here we go. Oh, it's not in the Bible. I just tucked my thing in here. You're very astute this morning, Abel. It's probably all that candy you've had. What are you talking about? All right. <laughs> all right. Hey, you just snuck right in there. All right. So uh, this is the story of how the pretzel came into being. Oh, you guys know where Italy is? Okay. Yeah, long, 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 long way. It's not in New York, no. There are some Italians in New York, probably. All right. He had a problem. The children in his church were slow at learning their prayers. So he rewarded the fast learners by giving them the pretiola, okay, which I'm probably butchering that word. But that word means little gift. The little gift was a biscuit shaped like a pair of hands clasped in prayer. Do you guys think these look like little hands maybe clasped in prayer? Looks like a heart, but like, think about it. I mean, you can kind of, you guys are going to have some too. But you could look at it different ways. Looks like two hands little, like together in prayer. Use your imagination. Now remember, I'm going to read to you. We've Americanized it. Well, actually we've Germanized it and Americanized it all together. Yeah. Yeah. So travelers ended up taking the Pretiola over the Alps. The Germans, thank you for the Germans, they glazed and salted it. Okay. And they be, it became a popular part of a German diet. Then in 1861, Julius Sturgis opened up the first pretzel bakery here in the United States in uh, uh, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Is that right, Pennsylvanians? No. Uh, where are you at, Phil? Is it Lidditz? Okay, he doesn't know either. All right. Now, pretzels are very popular here, too, as you probably know, as you all said, you know. Uh, so here is what we shouldn't forget uh, why the monk invented them in the first place. He invented them to encourage the kiddos to pray, and to pray to God is a wonderful privilege, and we should always do that, and we should do it often. Uh, think about it for a moment. You, can, you and I can actually talk to God and hear, uh, and he can hear us, and he can listen to us. Isn't that awesome? That every time we pray, uh, God hears our words. And you know what? Here's something even cooler, okay? The monks also believe, and this is going to be a little bit more for you guys, more for these guys out here. But these three little mark, these three little holes here, they also say that that represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Ask your parents later about the Trinity. <laughs> And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, here's the thing. When we don't have the words, so maybe we're just so upset or we're dealing with something that we just, we just don't, we don't know how to come to the Lord and, and just share it like we would share something with our mom and dads. The Holy Spirit that dwells within us, if we've given our hearts and lives to Jesus, groans on our behalf. Do you guys know what it means to groan? Give me your best groan, Abel. Uh, yeah. Your best groan? That's a good groan. That's a good groan. And so the Holy Spirit groans on our behalf. So he cries out to the Lord on our behalf, right? Isn't that cool? So here's two things you can learn from the pretzel. It reminds us to pray continually, 
And it reminds us of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit dwells within us so that when we don't have the words to speak, he groans on our behalf. Here's a passage for you, okay? Brother Paul wrote this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. You know what he said? Pray continually. Pray continually, meaning that we should always be in prayer. And that's why that monk created this pretzel in the first place. He wanted his students to, we're going to, I'm going to give you all pretzels and you're going to be able to take them and go sit down. Okay. Yeah. And so he gave us all, he didn't give us all pretzels. These pretzels can remind us that we should always pray. And that it reminds us of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit. Isn't that awesome? You didn't know that your little snack that you filled up and watch TV and wrestling and all that stuff with that uh, it actually reminds us to pray. Okay. Well, can we pray? And then I'll divvy up some, uh, some snacks for y'all. This is my private stash from the house. So, all right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings you give us. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of these little kiddos, Father. Lord, I pray that as they grow in you, Father, that they would learn to have a relationship with you, Father, that they would fall more and more in love with you each and every day and understand the power, the power that comes from that relationship and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of us, Father. We love you, Lord. We ask this all in your name. Amen. All right, how about some pretzels? Everybody grab a handful there. Uh, you know, yeah, well, you know, within reason, okay? Yeah. Don't get crazy here. All right. Go back. There you go. You got some. You get pretzels, and you get pretzels. Grab you some pretzels. And if you run out, you just sneak over to my chair, and I'll have. Go ahead. You can grab a handful. All right. Arch, you want some? All right. Get you some pretzels and go sit down. All right. All right. Watch this video on Annie Armstrong.
what a very cool legacy uh, that Annie Armstrong left behind. And, you know, one of the things I talk about uh, in living a, a life for Jesus is not about the things that we accumulate here in this world, because those things, I say, quite often will be sold in a, do- a box uh, for five bucks at an auction one day when you're dead and gone. But Annie's legacy Annie's Annie's legacy lives on because it was of the Lord, right? The Lord laid this on her heart, and she worked feverishly to make this happen and continue to do these things. And the Lord blessed it, and and that is what we we take this the why we take this offering every year because it continues to go to help missionaries all across North America uh, to spread the gospel. Uh, to the nations. The nations are coming to us, and, and we are constantly putting more and more missionaries on the ground. Uh, and so that's why we handed out these pamphlets to you all. We wanted you to see the different opportunities, the different, just a few of the mission opportunities uh, that are out there that, that people are currently serving in, uh, and to pray for them and pray for their needs, but then also to help us reach our goal, which you guys are, are going to smash. You, you smash it every year. Uh, but our goal for our offering this year is 1500 and uh, that is a, a small part of the billions of dollars that the Southern Baptists have given uh, to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. But it does so much good uh, to give our missionaries. I mean, think about it. If you're a missionary, you're not home. You don't have your, your family support group. Uh, think about also trying to have to raise funds to live where you're at. The North American Mission Board uh through this offering, provides that for these missionaries so that they can focus on the mission at hand, so that they can focus on reaching people for Jesus. And and so by you giving to this and praying for them, we are are equipping them to step out on the mission field where we are not. Uh, So I would ask that you would pray through this, pray for these missionaries, and then pray what the Lord would have you to give uh, to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Good morning. Got a little backwards there, but good morning. Glad you are here this morning. Happy Palm Sunday. We're going to dive uh, into the scriptures this morning and talk about what that means for us uh, in the, the life and time of Jesus and, and what that means for us today. Uh, and man, I'm excited about it. I'm excited because, uh, man, this is when you read God's word, when you are enveloped in God, I don't know if that's a word. If you're, you know, you're in God's word, man, it just continues to pour into you and feed you. And I hope that you have your own time with the Lord throughout the week, uh, studying his word and being refreshed, uh, by it. So, Again, we're excited you're here this morning. If you're a guest with us this morning, we'd love for you to fill out one of these cards and drop it in our offering boxes out here. Uh, And we just want to get your information so that we can send you a little bit of information uh, as well. And so uh, fill that out, drop that in the offering box uh, on your way out. Uh, That would be great. Also, uh, we take, we are out here. uh, Well, actually, we're only out here. At the communication corner, you'll find these little slips of paper. Uh, These are for... Uh, our prayer time. We we believe that that uh, lifting folks up in prayer is important, uh, but there's a reason why we put these forms out there. We put them out there so that we can have record of them, and also uh, our prayer time can carry on a little bit longer at the end if we don't have our thoughts all written written out beforehand. So if you would be so kind to write out your prayer request, Brother Rich will bring those up to me at the end of service, and we will read those, uh, and you'll have record of them as well. Uh, but we want to be as efficient uh, with God's time as we can and your time as well. And so please fill that out, fill all those things out and, and uh, you know, take care of that. Uh, and we'll get that done at the end of service. A lot of things going on uh, this week and, and heading into Easter and uh, kids are on spring break. And so it's just a lot of good stuff uh, coming your way. And I'll mention more of that at the end of service. But uh, in case I do forget. As you walk out these doors, as you look to the right, there is a portable baptistry. We never use it because we like to dunk people in the river, but it's out there in case somebody wants to be immediately baptized. Uh, There's a bunch of documents on top of it, okay? All those documents are things that are going on in this church, ministries that you can be a part of, uh, different people that you can hang with. And, you know, there's there's uh, veterans by uh, veterans uh, breakfast coming up. There's uh, a lot of different Easter things. There's the ladies uh, Bible study. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Center shot. Our center shot program is going on. A lot of different stuff out there out there. Amongst all that is a little form that says April on the top of it. 
There is all of our announcements. Everything that's coming up in the month of April that you need to know about is on that little piece of paper. They're going to be rolling through our, our, our uh, announcement screens, but sometimes we get to talking and we don't look up there and we miss those things, okay? But everything you need to know out there on that form, and if it's not, check our Facebook page, okay? A lot of stuff for y'all to be involved in. Okay, well, let's quit wasting time here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank him for the many blessings he's given us this morning. Father, again, we thank you for the many, many blessings that you bestow upon us. Father, we are not grateful, or we, we are not deserving uh, of that. We're probably not as grateful as we should be for it, Father. Uh, Lord, you continually to pour out your blessings upon us, and you continually lift us up, and you continually set us back on the right path when we drift, Lord. And so, Father, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would forgive us where we fail you, and Lord, that you would help us to see your vision, your will, for our lives, Lord, that we would step into it, the Lord, that we would we would walk faithfully by it, Father, that we would uh, we would just continually serve you, not only by our words, Father, but by our actions, Lord, that people would see that there's something different about us, Lord, that we would truly be the salt and the light that you have called us to be in this world, taking your message, the message of the gospel, the good news, to all those we come in contact with, Father. Lord, I pray this morning that you would take away all the distractions of the world. Uh, Lord, for this for this time that we have together to worship you, to open your word, Father, I pray that you would take all those distractions away and we would be able to focus wholeheartedly, Father, on your words and on worshiping you, Father. Lord, I pray that you would keep all those things at bay today. Lord, help us to lay those, those problems, those struggles, those worries at the foot of the cross and leave them there, Father. We love you. We ask this all in your name. Amen.
Just suppose God searched through heaven and couldn't find one willing to be the supreme sacrifice that was needed. sing this last song. We're getting ready for Easter. It's a little early this year as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's a little cool at that time. But you know what? No matter what time it is, it's a celebration because Jesus died, but he not only died, he rose again. And that's what we celebrate. Not his death, his resurrection. Because without that, the rest of it means nothing. Thank you. 
Time for Children's Church. We can follow who we following this morning. We follow Miss Joni, Jody. All right, and the rest of us can open our Bibles to Matthew chapter twenty-one. I include you, Jimmy. Matthew chapter twenty-one. 
I don't know why, um, but I've always, it's, uh, this story is in the gospels and other places as well. And, but I've always been fond of Matthew. I don't know why, uh, but I just, I don't know. Sometimes you find yourself partial to one of the gospels or the other. I mean, I like them all, obviously the story of Jesus, but Matthew has always been my go-to, uh, when, when reading through the gospels and maybe it's because it was the first one. Uh, that I started reading, I don't know, but uh, is one of my favorites. So uh, in Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 through 19, it says this, As Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside by themselves, and on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priest and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, scourge, and crucify him. And on the third day, he will be raised up. Now, I want you to put yourselves in the position of the disciples, if you will. And I'm just going to give you a quick refresher course. Remember that he chose the twelve. He spent about three years with them every day. This is not the first time in which he tells them about his end plan and what must happen. Uh, we know through study and, uh, and and reading the Bible that they didn't quite understand what that meant. But I guarantee you this, that when he told them that they were going to Jerusalem and that he would be scourged and crucified, there were images that came into their minds and they understood what he was saying, but they didn't understand why he was saying it just yet. They didn't quite understand just yet that he would have to give up his life and die for them so that we could be set free so that the mission would be complete. And so I imagine that on the road to Jerusalem uh, that, uh, that it was a little confusing for the disciples. You spend three years with somebody day in, day out. Uh, you begin to get to know them. You, you have a bond with them. There's a relationship there. And so all of these feelings, I imagine, began <coughs> to arise. And Jesus said, we are heading to Jerusalem. He picks up in chapter 21. And, and what a beautiful time. We call this we, we, we call this Sunday Palm Sunday. We believe this is the time the Sunday the, the time we celebrate the time that Jesus made his entry into uh, Jerusalem and he would bring about the events of the crucifixion, uh, the resurrection uh, and all of that is going to be set into motion by this act. It was time. And as we read uh, through Matthew, we're going to see uh, that Jesus is ready. He is, he is ready to, to complete, as John 19, 30, to finish the job, right? Uh, he is, is ready to face those uh, that are, are ready to, to persecute him. But what I want to point out this morning is not just so much of, of what Jesus does on this particular Sunday. We celebrate uh, Palm Sunday, the, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Uh, but all the prophecy, and we'll get to this a little bit later, all the prophecy that talks about this leading up to this point. We're going to find out a little bit later in the sermon how we got to this point. But right now we're going to read Matthew chapter 21, 1 through 17. In chapter 20, he's already told him he's going to go to Jerusalem. He's going to... Uh, the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes. He's had several, by this time, several run-ins with the chief priests and the scribes, uh, debating him on Scripture and, and policy and procedure and you name it. They were there on him, trying to get him to, uh, trying to catch him in something, something that they could kill him for to get rid of him. Uh, and remember, in those days and times, it, wouldn't, it wasn't a, uh, they were under, uh, you know, control of Rome. And so there was a lot of political tension. There was a lot of struggle. Uh, there were, it wasn't, uh, unlikely for, for somebody to start an uprising and, and to, to stir up a bunch of people and then either Rome or the Pharisees and Sadducees would, would put that out. And so they're kind of, you know, when, when they go after Jesus here, they, they kind of are doing business as usual. They're squashing anything that's going to draw attention from Rome, uh, to them. Okay. And, and so, as we look, we understand the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't understand who Jesus was, okay? They just figured, hey, it's just another Yahoo out there trying to stir up a bunch of people. It's going to make life hard for us, and it's going to interrupt our business. And we're going to find out a little bit more about that here in the last passage. 
So they were ready to, to get rid of this guy who had stirred so many, who, who was suspected of doing, uh, we not suspected, we know that it actually happened, that he did miracles, that he raised people from the dead, uh, that, that he healed. Uh, all these things we know that he did, but they were ready to squash him, to go away. And even after Jesus' death and burial and resurrection, they will pay people off. They will pay the guards off to keep quiet about what happened. And I just can't, my mind just can't, you see something like that, you see a man you saw hang on a cross, die and raise again, and you're going to pay people to be quiet about it? That's a whole kind of evil. But that's next week. This week, chapter 21, 1 through 17. When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say to the Lord uh, that the Lord has need of them, and immediately, immediately, he will send them. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even a goat, the foal of a beast of burden. I want to stop right there. I want to address that word Zion. When you see that word Zion, many times it is it is relating to Jerusalem or the people of Jerusalem, okay? Uh, and so uh, you want to remember that whenever we're reading through these, and we're going to read some prophecy later that we'll talk about the daughters of Zion, and, and remember what that word uh, means. Uh, verse 6, the disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them. And brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them, and he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats on the road, and others were cutting branches from trees and spreading them on the road. The crowds going ahead of him uh, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple and he drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple. He overturned tables of the money changers and the seats of those <coughs> who were selling doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. And the blind and the lame came to the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise for yourself. And he left them. And he went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. Now, there's a whole lot in this passage that we can unpack and talk about and tackle. First and foremost, uh, you know, we here is the coming king, the Messiah coming into Jerusalem. And he is, you know, this is a celebration as a king coming back from, from war. You know, that they would they would sound the alarm and sound the trumpets and they would make way for him to come into the into the city. But on this king, this king was different. This king didn't come riding in on a war horse. This this guy came riding in on a on a donkey on a foal of a donkey. And so this is not your typical celebration of the king that's coming back from battle and all the, the stuff that he's done. This is a whole different kind of kingdom coming about. This is King Jesus, and he is bringing the kingdom in which we will be a part of. And he, this is the beginning of all of that. And so I want you to understand in how he comes. Not as a king ready to, to kick Rome out, but a king that is thinking about the long run, the picture, a king that is going to sacrifice himself for the, for, for the pleasure of many. And he is going to die for you and for me. He's already told his closest disciples, all of his disciples, that he was going to be scourged and crucified, and on the third day he'll rise again. This king had a plan, but this isn't any ordinary parade for a king. And when he rolls in, I love how he rolls in. I love this part because, you know, all throughout the Gospels, Jesus is, is very quiet about the things that he's doing. He, lets, he tells those people, go and show the, show the priest, show the, 
<coughs> scribes, how you're different, how you're changed. And now we're getting to the point. Now we're picking up some momentum. I mean, you don't flip over a table and not draw any attention. Okay? Now I want to talk about that too. Now, now he comes in not like a normal king would, but this is the king of kings and the lord of lords, right? But he comes in meek and mild, just how he came into the world, right? He came in meek and mild. Who did he appear to first? The shepherds, right? And, and so again, talking about his kingdom and the kingdom that is coming, he comes to, to seek and save the lost, right? He, he comes to, to heal those that are hurting. And so this is all about his kingdom. I want you to understand that this morning. There's some, one thing, one little message that, the, that some of the disciples just didn't quite understand just yet. That this king was coming to die. And by this king coming to die, all will live. All who put their faith and trust in him will live. Now, I love the momentum that picks up here, right? They come in, the, the kids are crying out, Hosanna in the highest. People are laying palm branches down. They're laying their coats down. This is the prophet Jesus, the Nazareth, uh, in, uh, from Nazareth in Galilee. And then Jesus enters the temple, and he gets down to business. And he, 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 he it's, it's righteous anger. But what these, what you got to understand what these guys were doing. And I, <coughs> I've mentioned this before. It would be like when you go to Chuck E. Cheese and you put your dollar in and they give you four Chuck E. Cheese coins that are not really quarters because on one of their machines that should only cost 25 cents, you got to put in three of the Chuck E. Cheese coins. You understand how that works? They're making some money, okay? That is the best way that I can put what is going on here. These folks have set up in the court of the Gentiles, okay? So they're pushing out the Gentiles, that's non-Jewish people that have come to worship God on this uh, Passover uh, coming up, okay? And, and they're pushing out uh, the Gentiles. So they've, they've, it's like, think of a, like a craft fair. Y'all been to a craft fair? It's wall-to-wall -wall crafts and wall-to-wall -wall things that you can buy. You can't hardly move through the aisles. That would be essentially what these, these guys are doing. They had animals. They had uh, money exchangers. They had all this stuff set up, and they were taking advantage of those that had traveled far to come and observe Passover. And they were taking advantage of them. They were making money. And here's another thing. This is also why Jesus gets the attention of the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they were part of this money-making uh, process as well. And so Jesus comes in after all this. Now, remember, th this is three years building up. This is not just the first little run-in that the Pharisees and the Sadducees have had with, and the scribes have had with Jesus. I mean, this, there's a lot leading up to this point. Three years of ministry, three years of in and out of, of dealing with the Pharisees and the Pharisees dealing with Jesus and trying to catch him and him walking, you know, at some points just walking right through them and then just being speechless, can't even argue with what Jesus has done. And so it, it all comes to the point now, here, where he makes it very clear, this isn't right, and y'all are on the wrong path. And he begins to flip over the tables, and he says to them, he entered the table and he drove uh, the temple, and he drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple. He overturned the tables and the money changers and the seats of those uh, <laughs> who were selling doves. And he said to them, "It is written, My house shall be called a house." of prayer. I want you to remember that. But you are making it a robber's den. The blind and the lame came to him. I love this, right? He has cleared out everything. He's like, listen, there are, there are people that are sick out here that need a Savior, and y'all are, are making this a craft fair, and you're ripping people off. You're taking advantage of these people who have come to celebrate Passover. So Jesus clears out. He, he flips over the tables, and then here comes the, the blind and the lame, and they come into the temple, and they are healed. Not that the blind and the lame came in, sat down, and listened to the words of Jesus, but the blind and the lame came into the temple, and Jesus healed them. So if you're a money changer, somebody that's in it for taking, you know, for getting a little bit of profit, a little money cut on the side, and all of a sudden he flips over your table, says you've made this, in, this is supposed to be a house of prayer, and you've made it a den of robbers, and he flips over your table, and then these blind people and these lame people start coming in, and this man who's done flipped over your table is now healing them. 
you would think it was time to wake up. That it, it, Listen, this, this guy is the real deal. He is not just some Joe Schmo that stirred up a bunch of people, but this is the Messiah. But no, it just hits that hornet's nest and keeps on buzzing. But Jesus makes a point. <laughs> and the, the, the prophecies say to him, uh, he says, when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done, Okay, so they saw the things that he did. And the children, got to love children, who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They became indignant and said to him, do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise for yourself. And he left them, and he went out of the city and Bethany and spent the night there. That is a mic drop of epic proportions. Jesus heals. He flips over the table. He heals people, and then he walks away, and he goes out and spends the night in Bethany. Now, I'm setting up for you what we're going to talk about next week. But what I want to talk about this week is how did we get to this point? Right. Well, the last few weeks, we've talked about uh, how the prophet Isaiah, who lived 700 something years before Jesus' time, prophesied about all of this. Now, here's what I want you to keep in the story in mind of what we talked about today. And I want you to think about a prophet, a prophet who prophesied all of this, all of it. There's some details. I mean, there, he doesn't say that the Lord will flip over tables, but all of this, Jesus coming. Uh, Jesus being a king, dying, all of it, he prophesied it. We covered a couple of them. We talked about in John chapter one, uh, about how in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word became flesh, right? We talked about that three weeks ago. And then we talked about the suffering servant in Isaiah 53, about how Jesus will come and he will die for you and for me. And, and that, that it pleased the Lord to crush him because he is the perfect sacrifice. And then last week we talked about the, the servant. Messiah. We talked about John 13, that Jesus uh, girded his loins and he washed the feet of his disciples. Isaiah and Zechariah and all these prophets, we're going to talk about Isaiah and Zechariah today. All of these guys prophesy about this. It's all there. Old Testament to New Testament. It's all there. And you would think that these guys, when Jesus comes in and flips over the tables, they would think, you know what? Isaiah said something about this Messiah. I want, you to re I want you to follow along with me, okay? Let's go all the way back, right? Cue the time travel music. The doo -doo 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 -doo. We're going back, okay? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. We're going to go quick through these, okay? Because there's a lot of them, and we're going to run out of time. For a child, this is, should be familiar to you. We just talked about this not a couple months ago. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David, keep that in mind, and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this, Jesus' birth, he will come, a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, and he will become, he will come through the line of David. Go back to Matthew chapter 1 and read the lineage, okay? Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 1, it tells you all the way down, 14 generations, all the way to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, uh, who will come to us, that child that will be born to us. Isaiah 40, verse 3, is not talking about Jesus, but guess who else is talking about? A voice is calling out, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness, make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Who is he talking about there? John the Baptist! The forerunner for Jesus, the guy that would prepare the hearts and minds of people to turn their hearts back to God. He wouldn't 
cleanse their sins, but he would turn their hearts to God. And that way that when Jesus, the Messiah, would come, they would say, you know what? I've already been thinking about God. I know that I've got sin in my life. And you know what? Jesus is going to die on the cross for my sins, and he's going to take away that sin from my life. So John was the forerunner for Jesus, a voice crying out in the wilderness. Isaiah 42, 1 through 4. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not uh, be disheartened or crushed until he has established justice on the in the earth, and the coastlands will wait expectantly for his law. This prophecy right here is talking about the ministry of Jesus and how Jesus comes. Jesus didn't come in, in into Jerusalem as a on a war horse saying, I'm coming, I'm here, I'm ready to destroy the Romans. No, he came in on a donkey. He came in soft. He came in as a loving Savior, as a Messiah. Just like he came into this world, he came into a, a stable, a barn, a, a cave, however you believe that that happened, a cave where animals were kept. And, he, and the angels appeared to the shepherds, the lowliest of the low, to say, behold, the Messiah is here. It talks about Jesus' ministry and how he loves those people, all those people, the Samaritan woman, Zacchaeus, you, the list goes on to all these tax collectors and, and sinners that needed a Savior who would meet them where they're at and love them and show them that there's a different way to live our lives. That is what the servant Messiah did, did and does. Isaiah 53, we don't have to read through all of that, but I want to read, well, We'll just read it. Who has believed in our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot. Remember that? And like a root out of the parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. <coughs> Meaning that he wasn't like any of these other people. He was despised uh, and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and he did not uh, esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. And he was oppressed and he was afflicted. And he did not open his mouth. Like the lamb who was led to slaughter, like a sheep that was silent before its shears, he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as uh, for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living for transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due, his grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with, rich man, with a rich man in his death because he had done no violence nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied by his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, will justify the many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great and he will divide the booty with the strong because he poured out himself to death and is numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sins of many and interceded for the transgressors. That is you and I. That is the, uh, the suffering servant. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who stood before his accusers silent. They accused him of blasphemy. They hit him in his face. They did all these dirty things to him, and yet he stood there and he took it. Why? Because you and I hung in the balance. 
He was the only one that could take upon the wrath of God that, to, to cover all sins. And he was the perfect sacrifice. And God crushed him. God crushed him so that you and I, you and I could be saved from sin. I want you to understand that this morning. I want you to not take lightly the gift of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You and I, our sins, put Jesus on the cross. There was no other way. But our sins put him on the cross. And so when we look upon the cross, when we think about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, remember that we have a hand in it. Each and every day, that sin that, we, that comes so easily to us because we are depraved in our nature, remember that, that every time that you fall into that sin, it might as well be a hammer hitting a nail because we put him there. And here's the thing. We didn't, I say we put him there. He willfully went there for us. Don't take lightly. Don't take lightly. The Lord who came to live and love and die for you and for me. And when he tells us to go and do likewise, that we would do the same. He calls us to serve him. He calls us to live for him. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'm with you always. That means go and do likewise. Go and live and love for for me, do as I did. Show others the way. Be the salt and the light. Continuing on, prophecy. This prophecy is found in Matthew chapter 21, the passage we just read, Isaiah 62 10. These next two passages are all from the scripture. Actually, these next three passages are all from the text in which we just read in Matthew chapter 21. Okay? Isaiah 62 10 through 12 says, Go through. Go through the gates, clear the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, lift up the standard over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, lo, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they will call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you will be called, sought out in the city and not forsaken. Where do we see that in, in, in chapter 21? Well, if you look to verse 5, verse 5 says, say to the daughters of Zion, okay? And then you see this passage, Zechariah 9, 9, who lived about 500 years before Jesus came. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is, uh, he is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the foal of a donkey. Gee, I think I just read that in Matthew chapter 21, verse 5. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of the beast of the burden. Prophecy fulfilled. Folks, we're looking at from prophecy to promise this morning. Prophecy to promise this morning. I know we're, we're, we're cruising through the book of Isaiah here, but I want you to understand that they prophesied about the promise in Jesus. Okay? I want you to understand your king has come. I want you to understand that he came willfully and he went to the cross for you and for me. Isaiah chapter 56, 6 through 7. This is Jesus now quoting Isaiah in the temple. And he says, we find this also in chapter 21 of Matthew, also the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, every one of them who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even those I will bring to my holy mountain, and I will make them joyful in the house, my house of prayer. I seem to read that somewhere, their burnt offering and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Gee, if you look to chapter 21 and you look when Jesus begins to cleanse the temple and he says there, you have made my, my house uh, uh, out of, well, hang on a second. There it is. 
It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. Here he is, Jesus, quoting from the book of Isaiah to these that have turned it in to a house of robbers. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 5, Then a shoot will spring up from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his root will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and strength, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make decision by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth, and he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Also, righteousness will be the belt about his loins and faithfulness, the belt around his waist. Do you understand where I'm going this morning? Do you understand that you have a father in heaven who sent Jesus, his son, to die on the cross for your sins? That he has been anointed by the Holy Spirit, as we saw whenever Jesus walked through the waters of baptism. He didn't need to be baptized by John, but he did it to fulfill all righteousness. And when he did that, when he came up out of the water, they heard an audible voice that said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased in the Holy Spirit like a dove, or it actually was a dove we're not exactly sure but either way we knew that in that picture of jesus baptism we see the father the son and the holy spirit does anybody need a pretzel this morning we see the trinity his spirit is upon him jesus is it came and he died for you and for me and guess what it was prophesied 700 500 years before all this would happen This is prophecy fulfilled. This is prophecy and a promise. Folks, we can be secure in our faith. We can be solid in understanding that Jesus did, in fact, come, die, and was buried and resurrected because we see it all throughout history. Prophecy talking about the Messiah, the Messiah coming, the Messiah dying and raising again. It is all there. It is all ready for you to put your faith and trust in and begin to live and share with others. Jesus came. Matthew chapter 21. Came into the village. Hosanna in the highest. Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And that, folks, didn't just start the ball in motion. Jesus done kicked it down the hill, and it's about to get real. Because for three years, Jesus has done ministry. He has interacted with all kinds of different people. He's healed. He's brought at least, well, he's brought three people back from the dead. How do you argue with that? Wasn't breathing. Now they're breathing, okay? How do you argue with any of these miracles? He was blind, now he sees. He couldn't walk, now he does walk. Jesus says in one one of the Gospels, he says, which is easier, to tell him that his sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? And he tells the man to get up and walk. Of course it would be easy to say that his sins are forgiven. But he tells the man to get up and walk, and he gets up and he walks. That is our Messiah. That is who Isaiah is prophesying about. So, folks, as we enter into the Easter season, we prepare our hearts when we realize that Jesus is about to go to the cross and to to do the very thing that would save our lives as he dies on the cross for your sins and mine. Remember. Remember it. Share it with others. And remember that it's been prophesied and it's been fulfilled. I want to leave you with this this morning. And he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its streets, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse, praise God. And the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, 
and his bondservants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be there will no longer be any night. They will not have need of the light of a lamp nor the light of the sun because the Lord God will illumine them. And they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord, the God of spirits, of the prophets sent his angel to show to his bondservants the things which must soon take place. And behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who heeds the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down and worshiped at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and of your brethren, the prophets, and those who heed the words of this book. And the last thing he says, worship God. Worship God. That's Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. I'll read the second half next week. But understand that we go from prophecy to, to promise. And that promise is fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. And so we have to live each and every day understanding that our Lord and Savior did in fact come and he did in fact die and he is in fact coming quickly. And so we must serve him each and every day. My prayer is that you would put your faith and your trust in him. I can't give you hardly any more details about his coming and his dying and his coming back. It's all right there. But put your faith and trust in him this morning. Know that he is, in fact, the Messiah. And he did, in fact, die for your sins and mine. And he is the only way. He is the only way to heaven. Let's pray. Father. We thank you for the many blessings you give us, Lord. We thank you for the roadmap in which you have given us in the book of Isaiah and all throughout the prophets, Father, as they point to your son, your plan in Jesus. Father, I pray that as we go about our days, as we serve you each and every day, Father, may we remember, uh, Lord, that this wasn't just something you cooked up in a few minutes, Father, but you had it planned for a long time. Lord, you have a plan for our lives. You had a plan for our Messiah. Lord, you you had a plan to work it all out to bring us back to you. So, Father, help us to humble ourselves. Help us to humble ourselves and look to you, Father, to trust in you, to know that your son Jesus is, in fact, Savior and King. Help us to put our faith and trust in him. And Lord, that each and every day we would walk and talk and, and, and reminisce with you, Father. That we would share with all those we come in contact with the wonderful, awesome, incredibly solid gospel message. Help us to stand firm on the words which we read today, Father. We love you. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Let's stand and sing this morning. Remember the words that I shared earlier, Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. We're called to be uh, disciples of all nations. Call, go and be disciples of all, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'm with you always. It starts with Romans 10, 9. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That means to, in Romans 10, 9, says, believe in your heart and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. And when you believe with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength in the Lord Jesus Christ, then your mission becomes to how do I tell others about Him? How can I live for Him today? How can I change my life? How can He change my life to accomplish good for Him? Let's go to the Lord and sing.
thank you for the many blessings you give us. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to be in your house this morning. The opportunity, Lord, to read your word, to be inspired by it, Father, to, to be strengthened by it, Father. Lord, I pray that your words would, would continue to wash over our hearts and our minds today, Lord, as we go out and we, we fellowship with others, Lord. May we not forget what we are called to do while we're here on this earth. May we tell others, not by just only our words, Father, but by our actions, who we serve. May we love them unconditionally and show them the grace which you bestow upon us each and every day. Spurring each other to strive towards righteousness. Not to sin no more, but to sin less and less. Father, prayer is that you would continue to grow us. You would continue to mature us, Father. Help us to live in love for you each and every day. We ask this all in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Let me rephrase what I said there in that prayer. I heard uh, a, a pastor say one time that striving towards righteousness is that we don't, I misquoted it, uh, not that we are sinless, but that we sin less and less. So the idea is that as we strive towards Jesus, the more he carves out of our lives that we no longer need anymore. And so we sin less and less. This is our time that we enter into prayer. Do we have, was there any out there? Laid one there for me. Okay. All right. We got one here this morning. Listen, uh, Debbie has asked for prayer for Leah Scharfenberg, yes, uh, Mel Melissa's sister-in-law. Prayers continually for healing after her stroke. Uh, prayers are working. She talked to us on Friday. Well, that's great. Any other updates? We're doing, we've been praying for her for the last couple weeks and seeing improvement. And that's great. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Baby steps, and we'll continue to take that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Any that didn't get wrote down this morning. As I said, we, we like to have those written down so that we can kind of cruise through this, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yes. Awesome. Praise God. All right. We'll be praying for both Lindsay and Dylan. Praying, Lindsay, that the doctors uh, will be anointed by the Spirit of God and have wisdom and knowledge in how to heal you the best way they can and pray for recovery quick. It's going to be hard being mom of a toddler. Well, I guess is he a toddler, still an infant toddler. I don't remember when that. He's starting to move pretty good, though. Yes, Miss Barb. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be praying for Miss Jackie. You know, give her a phone call. And that goes with anybody that, that's been missing for a, a while or even a one Sunday or just checking in and making sure that they know we're thinking about them and praying for them and if there's any way that we can help in any way. And so we should uh, definitely be checking in on Miss Jackie and making sure uh, that she's taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Be praying for Miss Jackie this time. Anybody else? Tommy, yes. Uh, Debbie Martin has shared that her granddaughter, Devin, is uh, going to have a baby tomorrow and will be in ICU. The baby will be uh, probably going to have heart surgery. So we need to pray for mama tomorrow and the newborn baby. We'll do that. That was praying for God's wisdom and all of that. Praying for family, that's never an easy thing. But those NICU nurses and those baby nurses, boy, I tell you, they're something kind of a special breed. They're good folks. 
Miss Bonnie, yes. Yeah, how's the shoulder coming? Not good. Okay, we'll be praying. Yes, Sandy? What, well, in Japan, you said? Japan. All right, we prayed for him. All right, yes, Larry. Whitney. Okay. All right, Bill. Praise God. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Take it. Yes. Okay. Yes, Danny. So who is this again? It's his wife. Yes, Miss Mary. Good to see you again this morning. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you this, you know, we are told that, that our bodies are going to fail. We're going to have hurts. <laughs> but the Lord, it, it is promised to us that our bodies will, will fail. Uh, but each and every day that the Lord gives us breath is a blessing and uh, we can live our full. Even if we've got pain, we can give God the praise and the glory for giving us one more day. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Anybody else this morning? All right. I see none. All right. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the many blessings you give us. Lord, we thank you for, uh, Lord, spring is coming. Lord, you have made the grass begin to grow and the trees begin to bud and the turkeys begin to gobble, Father. And, uh, Lord, we just thank you for all of that. We thank you for showing us in nature and all around us, Father, that you are not asleep on your throne, but that you cause it all into motion. So, Father, I pray this morning that first we would see you, we would understand who you are and what you did for us, and we would give you all the praise and glory. And we understand, Father, that our cup overflows. And that, Lord, each and every day that you give us breath, you give us life on this earth as an opportunity to tell others about how good you are. So, Father, I pray that this morning 
we would know that. And the Lord, we go out of here ready and prepared to share. And Father, this morning we also lift up each and every one of these requests. Lord, many of a, many of the requests are dealing with sickness and and hurt and uh, bodies not healing and difficult diagnosis. And uh, Lord, we know that you're in control of it all. Lord, we know that even though our bodies may fail, you have given us an incredible, incredible retirement plan. Lord, that when this life, when this earth ends, if we put our faith and trust in you, as Revelation chapter 22 tells us, there will be no more curse. No more curse. No more hurt, no more pain, no need for a light, no need, no no more darkness because your glory will shine all around us. Father, we lift up each and every one of these requests to you today. And we pray that we would anchor ourselves in you as we face these difficult times, these trying times. We would know that you've already got a plan for us, Father. And that we would live faithfully telling others about this Jesus who died for us so that we could live. Lord, I pray this morning that no one would leave this room without knowing genuinely and truly what it means to have a relationship with you. If they don't know you, Father, they would put their faith and trust in you right now. And Lord, that they would go and share with others what they've done. Father, watch over us. Keep us safe as we go. Thank you, Father, for the praises that we've mentioned this morning. We love you. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Well, thank you for being here this morning and and, uh, worshiping with us and opening God's word with us this morning. A couple things I want to make mention of before we go. These announcements are rolling through a lot of things going on in our church that you should be a part of a lot of things that are going to just uh just bless your soul uh if you're a part of these and you can pick that up this is what that form looks like it says deer creek church is april 2024 there's also march out there there's a few more dates in march that are out there to look at grab both of them take them with you home put it somewhere mark stuff on your calendar a lot of great things going on in our church, including our spring rendezvous, uh, which is going to, we're going to have, I'm just going to give you a highlight. We're going to have brother Rob Phillips back with us on Friday night. You guys remember brother Rob Phillips came and did our apologetics conference a couple years ago. Dude has forgot more about the Bible than I'll ever know. And then on Saturday, April 13th, right here at Deer Creek Church at 6 o'clock, we're going to have the Punches Family Band. Uh, If you were able to go a couple years ago, no, not a couple years, last year, uh, to the the Baptist home for their uh, 100th year anniversary celebration fall festival, Uh, they were there playing wonderful bluegrass band. You're not going to want to miss them. Uh, Great, great, great people. And then on Sunday, uh, we're going to be right here uh, having our monthly potluck right after service. So bring your favorite dish and come and celebrate with us. We're going to we're going to worship. We're going to give God all the praise and glory as we end that rendezvous uh, with with me. Sorry. uh, And the Deer Creek Band right here as always. But then that night, Listen, if you if you feel if you feel like you just got to sing, you, you feel like the Lord has has laid a, a song in your heart. You have the opportunity Sunday, April fourteenth. It's called the Deer Creek Jam. You come here at six o'clock. They're gonna sing and play your favorites. Even if you got a request, they're gonna do their best to to play that for you. And uh, if you want to sing a special or something, you can come on up here and sing as well. Or if you play some special instrument, uh, you you might come and do that as well. Uh, Bagpipes would be extremely awesome if anybody out there can do that. Okay, so that's just a few things. Also, one more other thing I want to put out there for you. Uh, we are going to be taking a mission trip to Rochester and Austin, Minnesota this summer, July 28th to August 2nd. We had a mission trip meeting on uh, Wednesday about that. This is just an informational sheet about that. 
Uh, if you're interested in going, we still have open spots for you to go. All the information is on this piece of paper. Grab one of those out there as you go. And there's also a sign-up sheet. I need you to sign up, put all your information there so I can give you updates as we head closer and closer to time uh, to doing that. We're going to be working with the, the Spanish mission up there in uh, Rochester and in Austin, there's a Spanish speaking church. We are working with them as well, doing different, uh, either Bible studies, kids camps. We might be doing some yard work. We're not sure, uh, just yet, but we are, uh, we're excited about what the Lord's going to do on that trip. So be praying for that, even if you can't go, but man, really search your hearts and souls and see if the Lord is where the Lord is leading you. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff going on in this church and you need to be a part of it. Um, uh, and so check it out and get, get signed up for whatever, uh, floats your boat out there. The Lord leads you to. All right. Yes, sir. You got one thing. Wait, 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 wait. You're not paying for the whole thing? Well, uh, the word got out that Ron Baker is bringing his checkbook. Oh, oh, okay. Well, how D. What? I just wanted hey. to mention, I was <laughs> waiting for it to go through, but we're at 800 dollars on any armstrong oh praise so we're god more than halfway through next sunday's easter so yeah, yeah. eight hundred dollars towards our any armstrong goal of fifteen hundred so thank you for giving towards that yes awesome well, praise god something to go by. So I'll try to have those by next week. All right. So, but, uh, we have the volunteers. Awesome. Praise God. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, I should probably mention that, shouldn't I? Go ahead. Okay. So breakfast sides? Yes. Okay. All right. So, yeah, next Sunday is Easter, and uh, our our services oh, – I thought they were on here. Oh, it's back. It's in March. I've got the wrong one. <laughs> okay, 8 a.m. early service, 9 o'clock breakfast, 10.30 a.m. regular service, uh, and then uh, just see you all the see Mert about if you want to bring a breakfast item should be out floating about. Uh, it's gonna be a great time. Either come to the early, come to the the later regular service, but come and have breakfast with us, will you? Either stay and have breakfast with us, but just come and have a fellowship meal. Good time as we celebrate the the burial, uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, giving us hope uh, to continue on throughout this season uh, of our lives. Okay, uh, is that all the announcements? Yes, sir. Don't, yes, next Saturday and Sunday, don't forget about the Lester's uh, uh, pageant out there at the caves. You're not going to want to, I hear it's pretty awesome. So Saturday at 6 o'clock, doors open at 5.30, and then Sunday, 6.30 a.m. Or 6, free admission on Sunday. Okay, both, both. So, But I bet it's going to be packed, so you better get you there quick, okay? It's a pretty awesome deal, so make sure. A lot of stuff to be a part of. What? Yeah, he's a thief. We we talked about that last week. So, yeah, we're hoping we're praying for you, Jimmy. One day, maybe you'll be Jesus. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Right behind you. How old are you? Oh. What was it like to know Moses? <laughs> 66. We're, we're glad you're here, Jimmy. Oh, yes, my wife. My wife's birthday is tomorrow. 
And what? No, no, no. I married a young woman. She'd take care of me when I'm older. At least that's what I was told. I doubt it. She'd probably kill me. Anybody else? None? All right, take it away, Ben. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Father, we thank you for the many blessings you give us, Lord, as we go out of this place today. Lord, may we remember that you have a plan, you have a purpose for our lives. Lord, that you would uh, guide and direct us, Lord, each and every day. Lord, that we would uh, be that mouthpiece for you as we are out there, that salt and light, Father. Uh, not just by our words, but by our actions, Father. Help us to live in love for you. We love you. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Would you be free from your birth?